start taking notes, guys. Let me get my big old head out the way. Two seconds over here. My big old head is gone. All right, cool. So calculating slope. Let's go ahead and think about it in English first. So right over here. Slope is basically how steep a line is. All right. That's all slope is. How steep a line is. Now, there's a formula to it, but there's that formula that's like right in the middle. That's not math, not English. It's like right there in the middle. And it's the rise over run. So yes or no, has anybody ever heard slope being described with rise over run? Yes or no? All right, sounds good. Now, does anybody know what that means? So are you, so for those of you that said yes, are you confident that you know what that means? So look at that. I see a lot more no's than yeses. Now, before it was a lot of yeses, and now we're seeing a lot of no's. So this is an example of what I was saying earlier. Remember how I said, hey, if you memorize it without truly understanding it or actually practicing it, you tend to forget it very quickly. Boom, this is that circuit. This is that situation right here. So remember this slope is rise over run. Really, what that means is this. When you could look at a when you look at a coordinate grid, something like this. I've been teaching for over 10 years and I got a master's degree in math education, which is my specialty. But I also teach English and general science as well. At the end of the day, I want to make sure that you can stress less and not have to worry about having anxieties about the test, being able to actually not blank out and feel confident about what you're doing. And at the end of the day, are you able to study consistently and know that you are growing? That's really what matters to me the most at the end of the day. So that's why my program is here for you to help you succeed. It has everything you need, the classes, all the recordings, all the practice you'll need, and the ability to text me directly so you have your coach with you, mentoring you every step of the way until you pass. I'm serious about your success. So go ahead and click the link in the description of this video or somewhere over here. That way you can watch how it works, see all the details, and sign up and start raising your score right away. If you have any questions, my phone number is 567-698-8867. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Text me and ask me about the program or click the link and watch how it works. Let's get this done. Let's raise your score and get you that job you deserve. Let's get to it. Everybody, help me out. When you think about rise over run, who remembers which axis it is that goes up and down? Because if you're rising or rising and falling, which axis is that? Which axis is that? Yeah, that's the Y axis. That's the Y axis. And so everybody, when they're talking about the rise, which one do you think they're talking about? The X axis, the horizontal, or the Y axis, vertical? Right, they're talking about the Y. They're talking about the Y. So remember that right here. We're talking about the Y. And so then everybody, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph one more time, our coordinate grid. This is as best as I can do. So if we're going left to right, if we're running left to right, and I'm going to do this just some justice here. Let's go ahead and do this some justice. I don't know why this guy looks like he has. Let me fix that right up. All right, so he only has partial scoliosis, and that's okay. But let's go ahead and say we're running left to right. Everybody, which axis is that? <laughs> that is our x-axis. That's right. That is our x-axis. If this is your first time in class, welcome in. This is how we do things. So going left to right, that is your x-axis. Sounds good. That's the run. Okay. So that's really what I want you to write right now. When you're talking about slope, when you're talking about how steep a line is, what you want to think about is literally the rise over run. You've memorized that. You've known that for years. But now let's go ahead and apply it and really truly understand it. The rise refers to the Y up and down. The run refers to the X. And not only does it refer to just the Y and the X, it refers to how it changes. So basically, you know, did everybody here know that when you calculate slope, you need two points? Yes or no? Did you know that we need two points to find slope? Okay, and it's okay to say no. If you didn't know, you didn't know. It's all good. You know, the, the least we can do here is be honest about the situation, right? 
Okay, cool. So here's the thing. When it comes to calculating slope, you're gonna be given two points typically. There's other problems that are a little more complicated, but we're not gonna worry about those right now. For the essential ones, the fundamental ones, basically you're gonna have two coordinates and every coordinate is made up of an X and a Y. So let me go ahead and move over here. So when it can, again, when it comes to slope, you're gonna have two points right over here. And the way that they're being named is in this exact order, X then Y, it's alphabetical. Not Y then X, it's always X then Y. Has anybody here ever confused X, Y with Y, X at some point in their life? Yep, it has happened a lot. It has happened for to a lot of us, right? Sorry, I got one of my students that called me like five times. Let's give them the link and be right back in two seconds. Here you go, boom. So with that said, alphabetic order, all right? It's an alphabetical order, X, then Y, X, then Y, right over here. And so anybody here notice the ones and the twos? Look at that one, one with the uh, X, Y, and the X, two, and Y, two. All that means, all that means is that what you're dealing with is your first set of X and Y, your first coordinate, and X2, Y2 just means your second coordinate. That's all it means. I could write, literally, I could write X3, Y3. That's my third coordinate. I could write X4, Y4. That would be another one. Nice and easy. That would be your fourth coordinate. That's all we're saying. Um, if you're asking if the order matters that you name them, no, never matters, never mattered at all. You might want to pick the order carefully because, you know, sometimes you don't want to deal with negative numbers, but it's going to be up to you. And we'll go ahead and talk about those situations. But does everybody here understand that the X1, Y1 just means the first pair of X and Y? X2, Y2 just means the second pair of X and Y. Um, this is one of the biggest issues for a lot of people to, you know, get those fundamentals down. So I really got to take the time to make sure you got this. So yes or no, are we good there? Perfect. And then secondly here, secondly, here's what we need to also understand. The order doesn't matter in terms of which coordinate you pick to be the one, the X1, Y1, and which other one you pick to be the X2, Y2. It does not matter. So the order in picking the coordinates doesn't matter. Boom. Again, the order in picking up the coordinates or in picking the coordinates does not matter. I don't want anybody here. I know some of us here have told me this in the previous class that I taught of this. Um, I remember y'all saying that, yeah, you know, sometimes you get stuck on just picking which one's X1, Y1 and which one's X2, Y2. Um, just know that, again, the order doesn't matter. And so here, uh, uh, Jose, no worries. I'm going to go ahead and show you the example soon. But here's the actual formula for slope. So go ahead, write this down because we're going to be referencing this a lot. And so remember in class, we should have paper, we should have pencil here, we should be taking notes and we should be trying these problems out. So if you don't have paper and pencil, just take a moment, go grab some. All right, so hopefully that was enough time to write that down. Again, slope really is this. Now, so now that you wrote it down, now I have your attention, I wanna actually show you how this works. So everybody, question, pop quiz. Slope is blank over blank. What was the way in English to say it? Type it out in the chat box, please. Slope is blank over blank. Rise over run. Okay. So let me go ahead and explain this to you one more time. I really show you why this makes sense. So rise over run. Everybody, when we said rise, which coordinate did we think of? The X or the Y? Which one was it? It was the Y, right? It was the Y exactly. So let me ask you this question here. Um, what does it mean to take the difference between two numbers? So here, the rise, the Y, notice that the Ys are up top. Now, but my follow-up question is, when you take the difference between two numbers, when you're subtracting two numbers, what are you actually doing? So I don't want to hear difference or subtraction. What are you actually doing when you take the difference or when you subtract two numbers? 
I'm looking for something other than subtracting. What is it? What are we actually doing? Decreasing, taking away, close, close, close. There's a specific, boom. Zoom user, identify yourself. I want to know what your name is because I'm going to send you a free shirt. Yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. You're looking for how many numbers apart they are. So again, Zoom user, give me your name in the chat box. I want to go and hit you up. I want to give you one of these for free. That's exactly what I was looking for. You're seeing how far apart the numbers are. So everybody, when you think about it like this in English, when you think about rise, aren't you looking at how far up you go or how far down you go? Is that not kind of what that sounds like when you're calculating rise? Yes or no? Let me know. Calcul you know, Finding the rise is kind of like seeing how far up you went or how far down you went. That's pretty fair to say. And so that's what this is. The change in the Y values. That's really what that is. How, what the difference is from the second Y to the first Y or the first to the second, whichever way you're calculating. So let me know if that makes sense there. On a scale of one to 10, how much sense does that make? You're doing rise over run because you're seeing how far the Y goes from one to the other. You're seeing the rise. And that's what change in Y means. That's what change in Y really means. I'm telling you guys, this is going to be worth it because once we understand this, at a fundamental level, then once we start doing the problems, you're going to be sitting here like, oh, that, yep, makes sense. Makes sense. I know why I'm doing this instead of the whole hesitation because you're like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? No, I want you to do the first problem looking at it like, nope, I'm doing it exactly right. So let's get to it here. Same thing applies with the X. Israel, appreciate you. I got you. So same thing applies with the X. The run is basically saying, hey, how far left and right are you going? How far did you go? How far did you go? So let's write that here again. This is rise and this is run. Now, all you have to make sure you do is plug the numbers in the right way and in the same order. I got one last little thing to say about this and then we're moving on to practice some problems. Right over here is what I want you to pay attention to everybody. Yes or no, everybody? Are the X2 and Y2 lined up vertically? Yes or no? Are the X2 and Y2 lined up vertically? That's the biggest question of the day, right? The hardest one. Yeah, they're lined up. Absolutely. And so what about the X1, Y1? Are those lined up? I think somebody had a question there. Almost missed that. Exactly, Jose. That's exactly what I'm going to say. That's exactly what I'm going to say. So yeah, they're lined up. But everybody, true or false? Earlier, I said that the order that you pick the coordinates does not matter at all. True. I said the order that you pick the coordinates does not matter at all in terms of which one's x1, y1, which one of these is x2, y2. And so you can literally rewrite the formula if you wanted to like this. Oops, excuse me. Y1 minus Y2. Everybody, if I wrote the formula like this, what would I have to write on the bottom? What would I have to write in the denominator to make this still true, still valid? Which one would have to come first on the bottom? Yeah, exactly. The first one, the X1, exactly. 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 So this is what I just really want to point out, everybody. You're just going to go ahead and pick one coordinate and the other. You're going to put the Y of the first coordinate up top, the X of the first coordinate on the bottom. Line them up. Just subtract them in the same order. That's all you have to worry about. Just subtract them in the same order. Do not mix and match. This is not going to end well if you mix and match. Everybody, does that make sense? Just subtract the coordinates in the same order. That's really all you got to do. That's the shortcut with slope. Just subtract the coordinates in the same order. So that's all I'm going to write here, and then we're moving on. Subtract the coordinates in the same order. Oops. There we go. And then just go ahead and write it right here. Subtract the coordinates in the same order.
Like that's the quick rule of thumb. That's really it. Just subtract the coordinates in the same order. Now I spent what, like about 15 minutes talking about this one page. And I know because when it comes to slope, again, it's math knowledge, it is procedural. And I wanna make sure that you understand the why behind the mechanics. Because now that we understand the why, we can move into the mechanics with a little more of a sense of calm. So with that said, yes or no, are we ready for me to move on? Can we move on to some guided warmups here? Yes or no? Take a screenshot if you need to, obviously no problem there. All right, cool. So I'm gonna have my big old head back in the way over here. Let's go ahead and let's move forward and let's talk guided warm up now. So here, the question's asking us to do the following. Find the slope between the two points on the given line. So before we even begin here, everybody, do they give you the numbers for these coordinates? Yes or no? Nope. And by they, I mean me. So I'm going to give you guys a quick crash course on how to actually point out the coordinates on a graph because I don't want you to look at the numbers as just numbers. So everybody, really quick, what's the order again? Is it YX or XY? Which one is it? YX, right? Which one is it? No, in terms of how you write a coordinate. So what I mean is like when you, when you write a coordinate, is it parentheses X comma Y, Y comma X? Like what, which one is it? X, Y, alphabetical order, alphabetical order, alphabetical order. Okay, write that down. And then the other thing you want to write down about this is that the X is the left, right. The Y is the up, down. So here's how you do it. You start at the center right over here. This is called the origin. It's basically zero, zero. You're not going left or right. You're not going up or down. Yes or no, everybody? Do we understand that the centerpiece right here literally just means zero, zero? Because again, you're not going left or right. You're not going anywhere. So everybody, if I go from here to get to this point, I go down one, two. If I go down one, two, question my party people. Which one stays zero, the X or the Y? Pop quiz. If I have to go down, only down, which one stays at zero? The X. The X is the one that stays at zero because you're not going left, you're not going right. Left is negative, right is positive. For the Y, up is positive, down is negative. And so I'm taking a look here. I only go down two. I don't go left or right, so the X stays zero. So let me go ahead and use red. So this right here, this would end up being zero, negative two, because you don't go left or right, but you go down two units. Next up, right over here, everybody, what would that one be? What would that one be? I see one, negative one. I see one, one. I see negative one, negative one. Okay. So let me go ahead and help you guys out real quick. So over here, if you're going to the right, you are going in the positive direction. If you're going up, you're going in the positive direction. If you're going left, you're going in the negative direction. If you're going down, you're going in the negative. So try again. Try again. Yeah, one negative one, exactly. It's one negative one. Because remember, the X comes first. The X comes first. And so I'm going over once to the right in the positive direction. So it's plus one. Boom. So over here, this will be one. And then the Y, since we're going down, that would be negative one. And that's how we would have that. One negative one for that second coordinate there. Yes or no, are we feeling pretty good about this so far? Is this making sense so far? And again, um, thank you for those of you who are here are a little more advanced. I do appreciate your patience. Cause again, once we hit halftime for class, that's usually when a class picks up and we're doing problem after problem after problem. Typically, the first 45 minutes, we really want to get in there and understand every single piece, like actually understand it. And not just like boring textbook talk, but actually understand it before we get to those problems. So again, I, I do appreciate you guys being patient if you are a little ahead of this. So with that, here we have it again, the X and the Y first. So we now we have our coordinates. Let's go ahead now and actually figure this out. So. 
there's two ways to do this. One, when I show you this first way, you're going to look at me like, did you really, did we really have to find the coordinates then? Not at all. But I wanted to make sure you knew how to do it. So everybody, here's what rise over run means. When you get a graph, this is honestly going to be your, your favorite one. Instead of getting the coordinates, if you have a graph like this, this is going to make things really, really, really easy. Quick question, everybody. Rise. Everybody, what did I say rise was? It was the change in the what? Change in the, ooh, you guys are paying attention. There we go. It's the change in the Y. Yes. Change in the Y. So if I'm going from, let's say, here to here, everybody, I'm going up how many units? Okay, I'm going up one unit. So I can right over here, I can say that the rise is equal to going up by one. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the run is. Everybody, how many units left or right are we going? We're going one, but to the right or left? One to the right. So is that a positive one or a negative one? Is that a positive one or a negative one? If you're going to the right, you're going positive, exactly. So that's gonna be a positive one as well. Everybody, what's one divided by one? One, you're done. You're done, right there. Answer C, you're done. So that's the fast way to do it, again, if you have the graph. But here's the cool thing. Now that we took the time to actually figure out what the coordinates were right over here, what we're gonna do now is actually calculate it so we can let go of a little bit of that anxiety. So why is this a little better than actually just going in and tackling a problem? It's like this. Everybody, what was the answer to this question again? What was the number? Yeah, the answer was one. So the thing is, when we do it this way now, we know what the answer should be. And once we get there, we can build that confidence nice and consistently and slowly. Does everybody understand what kind of method I'm using for teaching right now? I'm basically giving you a little bit of slack here, getting you there, perfect. So let's get to it here, let's apply this. Pop quiz, does it matter which one I pick is X1, Y1? Does it matter, yes or no? No, it does not matter at all, sounds good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go top to bottom. That's it, we're good. So here I have X1, Y1, and here I'll have X2, Y2. So with that said, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the formula. Everybody remember this, carry negatives, bring the negatives with you. Just because you're subtracting does not mean you don't need to include a negative if you have a negative number. The negative and the subtraction symbol are two unique things, bring them together. Point in case, I'm gonna go ahead and solve this for you right here. So we have X2, so let me just write the formula for you one more time in case you need it. So, Really what we're gonna do right over here, we're gonna take that Y2, that's that negative two right there. We're gonna subtract that Y. Uh, wow, did I really write Y2 twice? Oops. All right, so there we have it. And then we're gonna plug in the Y1, a negative one. And then from there, we're gonna have X2, which we have over here. And we're going to subtract x1. I'm going to go ahead and change this to black, and we are good. Boom. So this is all we have to do to plug things in, everybody. When you plug it in, you're plugging in the exact number. If it's a negative, just put it in parentheses, just in case so you don't mess up. Because the last thing you want is to mess up a negative. Everybody, what happens when you plug things in the wrong way? Even if you calculate it correctly after, what always happens if your setup is wrong? Exactly. You got the wrong answer, not the wrong sign. You got the wrong answer, no matter what, no matter what. So we have to make sure that we put in the, the due time to make sure that everything is set up and that we're confident about the setup because there's nothing worse than calculating without the confidence, right? So here we go. Set it up the right way, plug in the negatives in a parentheses to make sure that you're good. Now, everybody answer me this. When you have a double negative, when you have minus a negative, let me make that a lot smaller, please, and thank you. When we have minus negative, 
what does that mean? What does a double negative mean? If I turn around and I turn around again, I'm facing the right direction. And so with that, it will make a positive, yep. So this will turn into negative two plus one. And then over here, we have the zero minus one still. And now we're good to go. So everybody, what's a negative two plus one? What is that gonna give us? What's negative two plus one? Right, it's gonna be negative one. Remember, when you're adding numbers of the opposite sign, so a negative and a positive, all you're gonna do is subtract the numbers. Two minus one is one, but you're gonna keep the sign of the bigger number. Remember, that's what happens when you add numbers of the opposite sign. One more time, if they're opposite signs, just subtract them. Two minus one, cool, it's one. But you keep the sign of the bigger number because it's subtracted into that direction, the negative direction, so negative one. Then now we have zero minus one. Everybody with zero minus one. Right, if you're at zero and you subtract one, you're at negative one. And so from there, boom, we'll have negative one divided by a negative one. Everybody, two questions. One divided by one is, right, one divided by one is one. And then what's a negative divided by a negative? A positive, exactly. A double negative cancels out. Remember that a double negative becomes a positive. And so here what we have, that cancels out, becomes a positive. The answer is positive one. And so we know that this was the expected answer. We expected this, but does everybody here see the mechanics that led to this, the steps that led to this? Are we feeling a little better about those steps? Plugging it in the right way, solving it the right way, looking out for double negatives. We did it all in one very fundamentally sound problem. And I'm Hoping that this makes a lot of sense. And we're gonna keep practicing and that's the good thing about it. We're gonna keep practicing. Jose, what's going on boss? How are you doing coach? Um, good, man. I, I know my negative numbers, but you're supposed to take these as like uh, dividing and multiplying them, right? So I know what negative signs to use. So you're saying, so we're dividing in the end. Like once you subtract the numbers and subtract the numbers, you'll be dividing in the end. Oh, okay, so first use them as like adding, subtracting, and then, okay, all right. I yeah. think I get it. Yeah, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep up the repetition here. We're good. Because I did it the other way. I did negative one, positive two, but I'll see. It. It. Hey, no worries. We got this. And Raquel, fine, no worries. We're gonna go ahead and right after this one, I believe. You... Yeah, right after that third one, we got it. So here, what we're gonna do is we're not gonna go to the slope formula. We're just gonna calculate it by hand real quick. So let's just go ahead and just tackle this one real quick. Let's find the slope rise over run this is all we're going to do we're going to practice the idea of again looking at the change in the y and the change in the x literally how far up or down you're going and how far left and right so everybody from here to here how far up or down do we go how far up or down do we go are we going up are we going down what is it don't just give me a number from this coordinate here, so look at the direction of the arrow. From this coordinate to this coordinate, how far up or down? We're going down three, exactly. So how would I write that in terms of the rise, everybody? How would I write that when I go ahead and write it over here? Negative three, exactly, exactly, there we go, thank you. Then up next, let's look at the run. From the same, from the end of this arrow, from left to right, how far left to right are we going? We're going right one. And so if we're going to the right, is the right positive or negative? Yeah, positive, positive. And so that's gonna be a positive one. Booyah. So we have negative three divided by one. Everything, or everybody, <laughs> everyone, uh, any number divided by one is what? Every number divided by one is the same number as itself. So negative three divided by one simply becomes negative three. And that is our slope. Yes or no, are we getting used to that in terms of using the graph? Are we getting used to that in terms of using the graph? 
Cool. I'm going to show you one more time. One more example here. One more example. So find the slope between the two points in the given line. One more time. I think this is the same exact problem. Oh, that was a mistake. Okay. So this was copied over. Yeah, the wrong, the wrong picture was used. Okay. I'm going to mark that down. I'm going to fix that for next time. So let's take a look at an example using the coordinates now. So with that said, we want to find the slope of the line through those two given points. We got zero, negative 19 and negative 20 comma six. So everybody, what's the first thing that you think that we should do if the problem is specifying, find the slope, what's the first thing we should do here for a good setup? Wagner, I, I agree, I absolutely agree. So if you wanted to draw the graph, you could, I mean, with 20 and negative, like with negative 20, negative 19, that's a lot of grid points you're gonna need to use, right? So it might just make sense to just use the formula. And so let's just recite the formula, everybody. Can you go ahead, type the formula in the chat box, just remind me what it is. It wasn't right there for the past five seconds. Yeah, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Every, yep, that's right, Ashley as well. Thank you, Jalen and Ashley. Somebody write it the other way. Somebody write it the other way. If we wanted to do it the other way, remember, David, it's the Y's up top, the Y's, only the Y's, only the Y's there. So, Krishan, correct. Oh, David, what's going on, man? My check, my check, one, two, one, two. How are we doing, coach? Doing good, man. Doing good. I bet. Now, co Coach, real quick, real quick. Tell me if I'm crazy, and y'all at the top, y'all can tell me if I'm crazy too, even though I already know. Uh, I was taught slopes a bit differently. I ain't gonna hold you. I And I might be looking at this before because I was like, okay, to match the X1, like X1, X1, Y1, minus X2 and Y2, they just taught me, like, I think differently when I was back in high school. So getting this formula and then that formula, I'm kind of at a crossroads. I'm not going to hold you, but it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense, though. Hey, no worries. No worries. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, not aware of any other alternative way that's, that's been taught other than rise of a run, the formula, the, uh, the order of it. I'm going to have to say that you might have been taught wrong, man. Um, yeah, Miss Nelson yeah. did me dirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you're going to blame the, that SAT score on him. You might be able to sue him. You might be able to sue him these days, you know, sue for anything. Somebody look at you wrong. Hurt my feelings. So with that, here we go. <laughs> let's go ahead and let's get this going. So 0, negative 19, negative 20, and 6. We're going to go ahead and write that formula out. So we have right over here, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. And so the other way that we can write this, the other way that we can write this is going to be, and I want you guys to understand it this way too. If you switch the order up, you can do Y1 minus Y2. Everybody pop quiz. If I write it that way, what do I write on the bottom? What do I write on the bottom if I'm writing it that way? Right, exactly. I'm writing it X1 minus X2. Remember, the numbers need to line up. Just subtract the coordinates in the same order. Y is up top, X is on bottom. Just subtract it in the same order. Does not matter. Does not matter. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. I'm just going to keep things simple. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Just keep things simple. So there's my formula. I'll just go ahead and follow that. Again, just follow the same order. And I'll write it like this. Six up top. Negative 20 on bottom, my subtraction symbol. And then I got the same stuff, negative 19 and zero. Everybody, does that setup make sense? Yes or no? Are we feeling good about that setup making sense? Again, just follow the same order. Here's the Y2, here's the Y1, excuse me, X1. And I said X1. It's been a long day. I've been up since four filming, man. Um, here, Y1, or excuse me, yeah, Y1 and X1 right there. Booyah. So there we have it, my party people. Just wanted to show you again the same order. Just subtract them in the same order. 
the y's minus the x's in the same order. Does that make a little more sense for anybody out there? Just subtract them in the same order. That's really it. Cool, 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 cool. So let's get to it here. So everybody, like we had said before, if we have a double negative, if we got ourselves a little standoff right here, minus negative, what do we do with that? What happens? What happens? It's positive, exactly. So Christian, it's in that order because if you subtract the Y's in a different order than the X's, you don't get an accurate look at what the actual slope is, like the steepness. You got to make sure that you have a good look at it. And I'm going to go ahead. I skipped that part, but remind me to come back to this. And I'm going to make a video on this anyway. Oh, it's in the map boot camp too. So you can go ahead and look in there. Just remind me, Christian, after class for the visualization of slope. So with that, here we go. This is going to be positive. So this is going to turn into six plus 19. And then everybody, we can probably do this here right now, right? Negative 20 minus zero. What's that going to be? Right, this is going to be negative 20. Anything minus zero just stays the same thing. Okay, sounds good. So there we are. Everybody, what's six plus 19? Yeah, 25. So we have 25 over negative 20. Everybody, is this answer going to be positive or negative? You have a positive number divided by a negative. A positive divided by a negative. What's going to be it? What's going to happen here? It's going to be a negative. It's going to be a negative. It's going to be a negative. And so we have a positive divided by a negative. Remember, a positive divided by a negative equals a negative. So with that, we will have a negative. And then everybody, 25 over 20. This is where we have to think about the idea of simplifying fractions. So allow me to write this over here. We have to simplify the fraction. So let's go ahead and get to that here. Everybody, what number can divide into both 20 and 25? What number can divide into both of them? Right, they're both divisible by five. They're also both divisible by one, but you wanna think about the highest number that you can divide out. And five is gonna be it. So everybody help me out. Let's divide 25 and 20 by five and let's see what happens. Everybody, 25 divided by five, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be five, perfect. And then everybody 20 divided by five is gonna be what? It's gonna be four. So there's our answer. Our final answer is negative five over four. Boom, there's your slope. Is this making a little more sense at this point for anybody that was struggling earlier? Not for those of us that are really good now, for those of us that were still slightly struggling or really struggling, again, is this making a little more sense than it did before? There we go. That's what's up, Tiffany. There we go. There we go. Dorian, I like the pride. There we go. So why not one and one fourth? So if it's a, that's a great question. Another person here asks, is it okay for it to be a improper fraction? Everybody, what's the answer to that question? I, I uh, So many of you ask me this, and I know at least one person here knows it. What is the answer? If you ask me if it should, if the answer should be an improper fraction or a mixed number, my response to you is always going to be what? Check the answers. What's the answer here? Should I leave it improper or should I turn it into a mixed number? Yeah, leave it improper. Leave it improper because your answer is right here. Boom. Boom. Yeah. So really, it depends. Literally look at the answers. If the answers are still in improper form, then hey, you're good. If your answer is, if your answers are mixed numbers, well, then you know what you got to do. You know what you got to do. So with that, let's go ahead and get to the next guided warm up. Here's what I want from you guys now. I'm going to go ahead and set a timer. And in this timer, I'm going to set this timer for approximately a minute and a half. And all I want for you to do is to set up the slope. That's all I want. That's all I care about. I just want you to set it up. Yes or no, can we handle that? Who thinks they can handle that? Let me get the timer up here. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So with that, let's go ahead and give this one a shot. So find the slope of the line through the given points. We have negative uh, 18, 16. 
and we also have eight negative eight so you have had enough time to look at this now i'm going to go ahead and start the timer for you go ahead get the setup done that's all i care about and if you need me to remind you about the notes right there there's your formula Hey, hey, hope you're enjoying the session of recording so far. So as always, if you're looking for extra ASVAB help and support from a coach to kind of guide you through the process, study planning and all the materials you need, just shoot me a text real quick. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, 567-698-8867. Go ahead and ask me about my all access program or just ask me about the program in general. I'll be more than happy to tell you about it so you know that you can stress less and raise your score with ease. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, that's Ace the ASVAB. Text me now, and then let's keep going. So question, everybody, just uh, from your honest opinion, do you think that calculating slope might be harder if you're not used to dealing with negative numbers? Do you think it might be harder to calculate slope if, if you're not comfortable with dealing with negative numbers? I think it's pretty fair, right? I think it's very fair to say. Now, let's ask ourselves that question. And don't answer this in the chat box. I, I don't want you to answer this. Just think about it to yourself. Are you comfortable with negative numbers? You don't have to answer it. Just think of it to yourself. Yeah, you know, I want you to really, like, really see the logic behind how you study. Oh, wow. I see that dealing with negative numbers is important with equations, with slope, with pro proportions, with this, with that. I think I want you to come to the realization that we should spend time to understand negative numbers and actually work with them and deal with them. Same thing with decimals, same thing with fractions, same thing with percents. Those are essential topics that appear everywhere else. And so I just really wanna remind you that it takes consistency, but once you get to the point where you're confident, very hard for that confidence to go away. So there you go. So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and mark these. Again, you, know, you don't have to think about it too hard. You can just go X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2. No need to overthink it. And so there, cool. Now let's just go ahead and plug and play. Again, we're gonna have the Y2 right over here and the X2 starting in the same position. Negative eight up top, eight on bottom, minus. And then we're gonna have the X1, Y1. And so from there, we're just gonna have 16 and negative 18. Nice and easy. And then from there, sorry, my head was in the way for a second there. And so from here, all we have to do now, calculate. So notice the easy part, might, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that the easy part for a lot of us is plugging in the right numbers in the right places. And again, you also could have had, so let me just be fair to y'all and just qualify this by reminding y'all that you could have also done it in this way too. You could have also done 16, and then negative 18 on the bottom. And then you could have had negative eight right here. And you could have had eight right there. Either one of these would work. Both are correct. Yes or no, do we understand that? These are both correct simply because you did it in the same order. As long as you do it in the same order, you're fine. Somebody please take a picture of this. If you want to go ahead and save this for later to remind yourself, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. As long as you subtract in the same order, you're good. So here we go. Let's calculate. I'll just go ahead and choose, I'll just choose this one. No problem. We have negative 8 minus 16 up top, everybody. If we have negative 8 minus 16, what does that really mean? If you have a negative number and you're subtracting, that's the same thing as doing what in the negative direction? Exactly, Muhammad. That's the same thing as adding in the negative direction. Because think about it, everybody. Let's say I got a positive 8 plus 16. I'm going to do 8 plus 16. If I got negative 8 already back 8 and going back 16, that's the same thing as adding the numbers. Add the 8, add the 16, keep it negative because you're going in the negative direction. Everybody was 16 plus 8 or 8 plus 16, either way you want to say it. But what is that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be 24. So we've got ourselves 24, cool. So it'll just be a negative 24. And then we have eight minus negative 18. Everybody at eight minus a negative 
turns into a positive and we've talked about all day today. And so eight plus 18, everybody will give us 26. That is correct. A positive 26 and we're all good. We're all set. Everybody, if we wanted to simplify, what could we divide both the top and the bottom by? What could we divide both the top and the bottom by? So some of us are saying four. Let's be careful here because 24 is divisible by four. Four times six is 24. Four times what is 26? Think about it. If you're at 24, the next number is 28. If you add four from 24, it's 28. So you can't do four, but since both of those numbers are even, it will be two. It will be two. They can both be divided by two. So what we'll do here, boom, divide them both by two. And so my final answer will be that negative 12 over 13. Nice and easy. Yes or no, did that make sense right there? That simplification step, just a quick check one, two there. Perfect, sounds good. So go ahead, Lewis, and then I'm gonna solve it this other way, same deal. And then from there, we are going to go ahead and do our timed practice. There is no raffle today, no raffle today. So go ahead, uh, Lewis, go ahead. Hey, coach, I just want to um, just clarify something. Yeah. All right, so I was doing that math boot camp with the negative numbers, and I thought I was doing good, but when you did this, it kind of confused me a little bit. Um, so we can do negative 8 minus 16, and that will equal a negative number. But if we do 8 minus negative 18, that equals a positive number? Right, because of a double negative right here. If you subtract a negative, that's like saying, okay, subtract the negative. And so you're still going positive. Mm -hmm. But if you're subtracting just a number, you're going back. But if you subtract a negative, that's like reverse, reverse. So if I do, let's say I'm negative $8, I'm in debt $8, and sure. I'm subtracting positive $16, does that mean, like, that's how I'm trying to interpret it in my head. Yeah, that's fair. So, so, so if, if I have negative $8 mm -hmm. and I'm subtracting another $16, so I owe you another sixteen dollars. That would equal exactly. Okay, okay. But if I have a positive eight dollars, and then now you owe me eighteen dollars, that's how we get into adding. No, so this is actually great that you said that. I'm glad that you used money here. So think about this like this. So let's think of a uh, positive numbers as uh, you know positive money, like what you have, and yep. then negative numbers are what you would owe or debt. Yep. Okay. So here okay. it's like, hey, my bank account's at eight dollars. I'm going to take away $18 of debt. So think about it, Lewis. If I take away $18 of debt, does that not mean I'm gaining money? If I lost debt, that means I'm getting better, right? Yes. Booyah. So that's right here. You're okay. taking away $18 of debt. That's how that becomes adding $18 to your account. Okay. So it takes time for sure to really get used to that, but... Okay. Um, as long as you keep repeating like those phrases in that way, thinking about money, it's like, oh, wait, here, okay, that's debt, that's ownership. Oh, I'm gaining here or taking away debt. That's like adding money. And if you keep saying it and saying it while you practice. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Hey, not a problem. So if you have a question, go ahead and type it into the chat box or go ahead and raise your hand in the chat box uh, or in the participant list. Either way, I'll take one more question here and then we will get into solving it the other way. Go ahead, Mohammed. So coach, uh, do we have three uh, formulas or only one? Well, when you say rise of a run, that's just the way to think about it intuitively. But then the actual formula, it all I'm saying with this here, with the uh, either order, all I'm saying is subtract them in the same order. So if you start with the Y2, you start with the X2 on bottom. If you start with the Y1 up top, start with the uh, X1 on bottom. That's all I'm saying. Well, you know, what I meant is when we're going to use the, uh, the Y equal MX plus Z. Oh, MX plus B? The MX plus B. Yeah, yeah so that's your uh, slope intercept form. So that's basically a follow-up to this class. And um, <laughs> I've been asked to do this class. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure to write this because I put slope forgetting to put the follow-up as the MX plus B. So I will do that next month for April. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. And so, yeah, Raquel, it, it is negative 12 over 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's your answer right here. So let me just go ahead and prove it to you. Oops. Let me just go ahead and prove it to you all one more time. Over here, that we'll get the same answer. 
So everybody, again, if we're going ahead and doing minus negative eight, if we're taking debt away, is that gaining or losing? If you're taking away debt, you're actually gaining money, right? A double negative is a positive. So here that would be 16 plus eight. And everybody, 16 plus eight is what? 16 plus eight is 24. Thank you for the math right there, boom. And then we have negative 18 minus eight. Everybody, if we are already negative 18, and then we take away eight more. So if I already owe $18 to the bank and I spend eight more dollars, well, guess what? Now I have spent a total of $26. I owe a total of $26. I owe 26. Because again, if you're negative and you're subtracting more, then you just add the numbers and keep it negative. So with that, we have 24 over negative 26. We can divide them both by two. And then from there, that is going to be 12 over negative 13, which is the same exact thing as negative 12 over 13. Same exact thing. Exactly. 12 over negative 13. Because when you think about it like this, you're just saying, hey, positive divided by a negative, it's going to be negative. Same thing when you look at it over here. Pos a negative divided by a positive is still going to be negative. So overall, if you want to just write the negative in front of the fraction like this, that's a really common way for a lot of people to do it right over here. That's a really common way for a lot of people to do it. Just put the negative in front of it. No big deal. You can put it wherever, really. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So with that, booyah, there we have it. That is negative 12 over 13. That is C. Are you guys confident that if we start doing some timed practice here, you'll at least be able to set it up the right way before the timer's up? That's all I care about. You know, the actual, you know, the solving with the dealing with negatives, you know, I didn't review that fully in this class. I expected you to have some understanding of it. Um, but if you don't, again, I can't fault you for it, but I know you know how to plug in numbers. I know you know how to plug them in. Maybe if we are confused on calculating, we'll get the time to practice. We're here. So here we go. Um, again, I, I, we got to skip the shirt raffle today. Um, I've been filming all day. My voice is almost gone. I didn't get the chance to reset all the apps for it. But don't worry, if you are in the program, I will be doing a raffle uh, in tomorrow's class. So show up to tomorrow's class. I will be doing one for a shirt or a hoodie. So practice time. We're going to do a minute, 15 seconds per question. Again, my only expectation is that you set it up the right way in a minute 15. If you didn't finish calculating, that's fine. We're going to calculate it together. I only care about having the correct setup in a minute, 15 seconds. So let me go ahead here and get the timer up. And a minute 20, let me do a minute 22. All right, cool. So here's the thing. Again, first step is plugging in the right numbers. Second step is watch out for those negatives. Step three, calculate quickly and check your work. Calculate quickly and check your work. So with that said, my party people, here we go. Let me set this timer up and let's have some fun. And right there. Let's go. So remember the formula. Just subtract them in the same order. You can have y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Just make sure, again, all we're saying is subtract them in the same order. Rise over run. The rise means the y's. The run means the left and right, the x. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and just say here, x1, y1, x2, y2. So all I'm going to do first is subtract the y's. And I'm going to pay attention here because I'm going to ask myself, what order do I want to subtract them in? Like, yo, everybody, if, if I wanted to avoid negative numbers or negative results, and I look at this and I'm like, yo, <laughs> I don't want negatives, which number should I put first for the y? the negative four or the 15. Right. The Y2 should come first or the 15 in this case. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Why do you say that? Well, because when you go ahead and write it all out, guess what? Boom. Everybody, what's the double negative again? 
Most of the double negative. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a positive. Oh, cool. Woo. Exactly. Exactly. So with that said, boom, now you're good. Now you can go ahead and have a good time and turn that into 15 plus four. Same thing over here. Let me go ahead and use a highlighter. And same thing over here. Two minus negative four. That turns into a two plus four. Again, just really highlighting the importance of understanding negative numbers and negatives in parentheses and stuff like that. So 15 plus four, that's going to give us 19. Two plus six, that's going to give us, uh, excuse me, two plus four. Thank you guys for catching that. Two plus four, that's going to give us six. And we have ourselves 19 over six. Guys, I'm sorry. Again, it's been a long day. My boy, I've been filming for literally six and a half hours today. And yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I typically don't make this many mistakes. So with that, we have 19 over six. And booyah, we can see that answer right there with D. So again, like the calculation, it, once you get used to it and you keep doing it and doing it, it gets a, a lot more, it feels a lot more natural. But the thing is, everybody, what do you guys think is harder? Understanding how to set it up every single time without fail or calculating numbers that are put in front of you? What is harder to you? And there we go. There's the debate happening. We see a lot of calculating. We see negatives. We see setting up. We see graphing, calculating. There's a bit of a debate going on. And so if it's calculating for you, you got to know your negatives. And if it's the setup, you got to know the formula. But if you want to pass the ASVAB, you got to know both. And so, again, pick which one first, get to it, then focus on the other part and keep going. Yeah, so if you use the negative four first, yeah, I got you for sure. So, Krishan, I'll go ahead and do it your way as well. I'll just write your setup. Krishan, you would have seen something like this. You would have seen negative 4 minus 15 and then negative 4 minus 2. So, that would have been negative 19 over negative 6, which would have turned into a positive 19 over 6. Right there. That's what it would have been for you, uh, Krishan. So, both ways would have worked. And so, let's go ahead and set that timer up and let's try this again. Does anybody have any? Oh, we do. Kevin, question, and then pork bacon, then Brimery. Oh, sorry, mine wasn't a question. Uh, that's exactly what I was saying. I did that same exact setup, the negative four minus 15, and still got the answer. So I was like, okay, um, that, that's okay to do that as well, correct? Exactly, and that's what proves the order does not matter. Just subtract them in the same order. You don't have to you know, place them in any particular order. Just subtract in the same order. Okay, thanks, guys. Yeah. Booyah. All right, pork bacon, that's hilarious. What's your actual name? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so I got a negative four minus 15, which first, gave me a negative first, first. What, What's your name? What's your name? I can't call you pork bacon. Uh, it's a bit, you know, me... Jonathan. Okay, sounds good, Jonathan, I'll take that. All right, All right. go ahead. So, negative, so I did negative four minus 15, I got a negative 19. And then I did negative four minus two, which is negative six. So I got them both negative. So do, do they become negative? Do they stay negative or do they uh, become uh, positive? Yeah, negative divided by a negative, positive. Yep. Okay. Yep, negative okay. divided by a negative. If, if you divide or multiply the same signs, always ends up positive. If you multiply or divide opposite signs, always negative. So they have to be the same sign when you multiply or divide it to be positive, different signs, you end up negative. Understood now. Cool, I got gotcha. you, Jonathan. All right, cool. So up next, go ahead. <laughs> Marie, welcome in, go ahead. Hello? Hey, there you go, how are we doing? Hi, everyone. Um, coach, if I pick A, am I wrong? Yes, because you subtracted the X's on the top, not the Y's. Oh, okay. Thank you. And no worries. Remember, we have the formula right here. The Y's go first, then the mm -hmm. X's. So if you got 6 over 19, that means you, you flipped it accidentally. Oh, okay. Thanks. No worries. We'll get this on next time. All right, okay. go ahead, David.
Whew, okay, I'm sorry. I'm still hyped about pork bacon. My guy. But um, Jonathan. But anyway, uh, quick question. Uh, so I see we got negative 19 and negative six. Now I know negative times a negative equals a positive, but in that regard, wouldn't we be dividing really? Oh, aren't, multi aren't multiplying and dividing the same exact operation? Just you're right. Yeah, you're right. Same rules. Same rules because of the same operation. Oh, and uh, Rajah, thank you for the mic check. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Hey, man, that's like a uh, that's like a C rate version of my laser sounds, man. I knew. See, I <laughs> and I muted you. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Lewis. And the way that those laser sounds should actually sound. All right, go ahead, Lewis. What's up, man? A uh, question. Um, maybe we're gonna do this later on. Um, but at what point will we no longer be subtracting? Is it if we have no negative numbers, for example, will we now be adding? Not sure what like you I, could you repeat so that? I'm trying not to confuse myself nor anyone else. So like, I'm getting it. I'm finally getting it. You know, negative times the I'm looking at negative times the negative is positive. That's how I'm you know 15 minus four. That's how I'm looking at it. But at what point, let's say if it wasn't a negative four, let's say both our um operations were positive, 15. You know, not even that, like at what point I'm trying to say is no longer subtracting? Well, it depends on the question, really, because when you look at the problems, you know, some questions will include negatives, some will include only positives. And so you have to take each one as it comes along and understand that there's a different like little rule to follow. If it's OK, a negative plus a positive, a negative minus a negative, you know, things like that. It really depends on the question. And that's why we're going to have a ton of questions here today where you'll see each of those types of examples. All right, so maybe I'm trying to like make it simpler. All right, so basically at what point, so when we have a problem like this, for example, the slope like this, slope of the line that passes through the following points, at that time when we have those coordinates, we'll always be subtracting. Oh yeah, like like here. Oh, you mean like yeah, yes. I just want to make sure I'm not confusing. I'm oh, thinking yeah, that yeah, yeah. again in a few weeks. I just want to make sure that yeah, no, fair question, fair question. So that's a great question. So earlier, everybody, um, I answered this in part when we said, hey when you are subtracting or taking the difference, what are you actually looking at you know, for the two numbers? What did I say earlier, everybody? When we are subtracting or taking the difference, so, you know, finding the rise of the run, we're finding what again? Exactly, Muhammad, how far apart those numbers are. So remember this, Lewis, when you're adding, you're just seeing the combined value. That's not the rise. That's not how far up or down you go. We subtract because we want to see how far apart those two y's are, because that's the rise. That's how far up or down you go. So that's why it's always subtraction. If that yes, that's uh, that's why I was I was getting confused. But oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So again, everybody notice that um, you know, no matter if you choose me as your coach or you know for your ASVAB program or whatever, or somebody else, remember that we always want to ask the reasons why. You know, even if it's like, oh, is it always subtracting? I'll answer that, but I'm always going to give you the reason why, because it gives you that much of a better shot to remember. it. So for any other ASVAB coach that's out there that you are maybe, you know, studying with, hold them to that level. Like, you know, ask them, like, why is that? Always do that. It's always a good thing to do. So with that said, boom, next one here. And here's the timer. Carry Ann. No worries, Carrie Ann. What I said was you're subtracting always because you're taking the difference to see how far apart the y's are, to see how far apart the x's are. Subtraction tells you how far apart, or rise and run. So we're looking for, again, find the slope of the, uh, the line that passes through these two points. So I'll go ahead and write my formula out. Again, it doesn't matter as long as I subtract them in the same order. Doesn't really matter. So with that, let's get to it. I'm going to say x1, y1, and x2, y2. So with that, when I set it up, notice how I'm getting away from writing it all out every single time. This is what I expect you to do eventually as you keep making progress. Let me let Brian in here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just mark it out, negative 11 and 15, or excuse me, negative 11 and 19 minus and then we have 15 and negative 12. Cool. That's one way to set it up. Again, the other way would have been this way. You could have also done this.
All right. So with that said, again, both of those would have worked. Here's your formula right here. So let's go ahead and solve these. Negative 11 minus 15. Everybody, let's go ahead and take a look right over here. Negative 11 minus 15. If you're already negative and you're subtracting, again, you're getting more negative. It's like if I already owe the bank $11 and I spend 15 more dollars, you're just going to add those numbers up. And that's how much you owe. Negative. Oh, so here, 11 plus 15, everybody. That's 26, but you keep it negative. Exactly. So negative 26. And then over here, 19 minus negative 12. Everybody, minus negative 12 means I'm taking away debt. So 19 minus negative 12 is 19 plus 12. 19 plus 12 is 31. A positive 31. Because you're taking away debt from an already positive number. Right there. So from here, we have negative 26 over 31. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. And if we do it the other way, watch what happens. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So 15 minus negative 11, that's going to be 15 plus 11. So that's a positive 26. Then the negative 12, if I already owe $12 to the bank and I take out 19 more dollars, or if I spend 19 more dollars, well, yeah, now I have spent $31, $31 too many. I owe $31. And so this is the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Again, you can also write it like this, negative 26 over 31. Same thing. So yes or no? Are we feeling even better? Is that confidence still rising? Is that confidence still rising? So let me go ahead and see over here, Vikesha. So I know you said the setup can be different, but for me, once I follow the setup that is given, work better with that and can hopefully learn another way to set it up and still get the correct answer. So then Kesha, that's the thing. Like the correct setup is by simply subtracting in the same order. Y is up top, X is on bottom, just subtract in the same order. We write the formula that, that X1, Y1 all the way up there. We write that just to give us a sense of comfort saying, hey, look, if you mark it and you go that way and you do it, it'll still be right. But that's a strict way that lacks understanding or lacks flexibility. By learning it as Y is up top, X is on bottom, subtract in the same order, that's an intuitive understanding. And so when you see the problems in, um, in the test itself, in the practice tests, whether you see two coordinates, whether you see two points, whether you see one point and one coordinate, it won't matter. You'll know exactly what to do every single time, every single time. And that's my goal for you. That's really my goal for you. Yeah, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad. Please try it that way, please do. And so Shamaria, you ask, uh, so when we set it up, do we line up Y2 and X2 and Y1 and X2? Exactly. Exactly. Line them up above each other. Y over X. The Y1 is above the X1. The Y2 is above the Y, uh, the X2. Just make sure you put them in the same order. That's it. That's it. Cool. So with that said, there we go. The final answer here will be negative 26 over 31. And that is C. That is C. Let's go ahead and try the next one out. And again, for those of you that do have to leave early, if you do have to leave early, that link for the program, because I know the person who just private messaged me uh, was interested in it, go to asvab.info slash classes. You can get the program there. All right. So there's a video that shows you everything about it, everything you get. But here we go. Next problem. Let's go. All right. We're going to try this out here. Let's go. So let me go ahead and let Justin back in here. Boom. All right. Let's get to it. So find the slope of the line that passes through the following points. We have three, four and eight, negative three. So again, when you check this out, you always want to you know, just kind of take a second to say, hey, um, is there any way we can set this up where we end up with easier numbers? And in this case, with slope, that's positives. I think we can agree on that, right? You know, the majority of us prefer positives to negatives. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, yeah, I could go ahead and start here and then subtract that one. So again, just subtract the Y's up top, the X's on the bottom, just do it in the same order. So I'll go ahead and write my uh, four over here and my three down there, and then just subtract them in the same order, negative three up top and the eight on the bottom. And there we go. 
And so, oh, looks like on the bottom, we're still gonna have to deal with a negative. So this problem was gonna get you no matter what. So it doesn't matter. So here, four minus the negative three, that turned into four plus three. And so we have up top seven. On the bottom, everybody, we have a three minus eight. Everybody, if we have, again, a positive subtracting a number, well, really what we're doing is we're taking the difference of those numbers and keep the sign of the bigger number. So everybody, what's eight minus three? That's gonna be a five, but because the eight is what's being subtracted, the bigger number is the eight, the negative, boom, negative five. Because think about it. If I only have $3 and I spend $8, that's a $5 difference, but I'm, that's $5 that I didn't have. Negative right there. So we have a uh, seven over negative five, which everybody, that's the same thing as saying negative seven over five. C. Boom. And so, Marquette, we may want to think about the order here uh, and how we subtract. You may have missed a negative because you may have done eight plus three, which was not, which would have been right. Eight plus three would not work. It'd be eight minus three at best. Yeah, if you got negative seven over 11 or a negative 11 over seven, yeah, that's likely what happened. Very, very likely that you missed a negative or, or a subtraction. So go ahead, Kevin, and then we're moving forward next. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so the subtraction you're saying, um, is it like, I must be tripping because like, um, it's a positive eight, correct? So like, how? Uh, why are we supposed to subtract again? Remember, we're subtracting because you're seeing how far up or down you go from one point to another. You're taking oh, okay, all right. to find how far apart you are. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. Hey, not a problem. And it's Kevin Wimberly, right? Hey, no worries, Krishan, I got you too. Hey, what's up, Kevin? Welcome in. So with that, sweet. All right, let's go and go to the next one here. Let's get that timer set up. Let's keep killing it. So we're gonna go a little faster. Are you guys cool with going a little faster where I explain a little less, give the right answer, write the, uh, write the formula, but I'm not gonna explain too, too much. We're gonna go rapid fire. Cool, sounds good. So we're gonna go do three problems back to back now, okay? We're gonna do three problems. The moment that the timer's up, I'm gonna circle the correct answer. We're moving forward to the next one. After the three problems, I'll go back and I'll set up the formulas for all three super quick. Then we'll go do the next three again and again. So here we go. Three, two, and one. Go. D. Negative 13 over 10 is your answer. Up next, we're going to come back. Don't worry. We're going to do three problems back to back. And then we're going to show or check our work. Three, two, one. Timer, go ahead. Let's go. I'll zoom in on this one for you guys for sure. I got you. All right. So the answer here will be a negative one. Negative one. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the next one here. Three, two, and one. Yes, there it is. The answer is... C, three over four, three over four. So when I wrote the rise over the run right over there, when I wrote that, who here had a light bulb moment? Like, oh, that's what it was. Did anybody here have that moment? Lewis, Krishan, Tori, Desiree. Okay, that means, I, that means, that doesn't mean I'm doing a good job. That means I didn't spend enough time going over the graph earlier. So that's on me, that's on me. So for sure, I'll keep that in mind when doing this class again in a couple of, uh, in like six to, uh, six to eight weeks. That's when I'll do this one again, um, for sure. I'll go ahead and go over that a little more. So let's go ahead and go to the next one here. Oh, that was all three. One, two, three. Cool. So let's go ahead and go through these. Let's have some fun. So the first one, negative six, six, four, negative seven. The setups would have been as follows. You could have had negative seven minus six over four minus negative six. Or you could have had six minus negative seven over negative six minus four. Either one of these would have worked just fine. So here, what you would have had is negative seven minus six is negative 13 over a positive 10. And then over here, you would have had six plus seven, again, a double negative,
And then at the bottom here, you would have had negative six minus four is negative 10. So then you would have had 13 over negative 10, which is the same exact thing. So there you go. Any questions here? Any questions? Any questions here? If you got a 10 over 13, what that tells me is you subtracted the X's up top, not the Y's. So we, would, we need to do the Y's up top, X's on bottom, rise over run. The Y's up top, the X's on bottom. All right, so no questions, no questions. Cool, cool, cool. Perfect, sounds good. So let's go ahead and keep to it here. Number two, find the slope between the two points over here. So here's how we're gonna find the slope between these two points. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and if we wanted to just use the graph, here's how you would do it. You would just say, hey, rise means again, how far up or down you go. So if I'm starting over here and I'm ending over here, I will literally say, okay, from here, I'm going down one, two, three, one, two, three. And so that's my rise. My rise, negative three, because you're going down by three. And then your run is going to be this. Your run is going to be going from here, right there. One, two, three. So my run equals a positive three. So your rise over run is literally going to be negative three over three, which is going to be negative one. Boom, right there. Yes or no, my party people, does that make sense? So I heard someone ask, uh, can we do it the other way? What if we went, is anybody curious? You, you tell me, everybody. Are you curious what would happen if we went from here to here? So instead of going left to right, what if we went over here to there? Would we get the same answer? Is anybody curious to find out? Anybody curious? All right, cool. So like, this is the beauty of math. Math works no matter what. As long as you follow the rules the proper way, boom, math works. So watch this. Let me go ahead and copy this page, paste it again. All right, so I got my copy of it, perfect. So watch this, let's, just, let's go the other way, sure. Watch, let me go ahead and just erase this part over here, erase that, erase this, and erase all of this. Okay, watch this, my party people, I'm gonna go the other way. Watch, watch, watch. So here in blue, how do I go from the right side to the left side? All right, cool, let's go ahead and get curious. So I'm gonna go from here to there. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. So my rise is positive three. Then if I go from here to there, I'm gonna go one, two, and three. And that is negative three because I went left. That's the negative direction. So now we have three divided by negative three, which would still be negative one it would still be negative one. It doesn't matter the order that you go and just subtract them or just go and follow the same order. Like, so here's what this means, everybody. Here's what I, I really am happy that you asked this question because look at this in the previous one. Notice how we went from this point to this point. We went down and then right. So negative and positive. Check it out over here. We did not go, so we went from here to there. We went up and then left. You know what we didn't do? We didn't go up and then from here go right. No, we followed the path the whole way. Notice how we went in the same order. From here to here, up and down. From here to here, left and right. Again, we followed the same order. Everybody here understanding that a little more, how we're following the same order of that subtraction or taking the difference. Booyah, let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. So with that said, let's go ahead and check it out over here. Rise over run. Same thing with the next question. Finding the slope between these two points. The rise, you're going up one, two, and three. And then the run is one, two, three, four. Going up is positive. Going right is positive. Positive one, two, three over positive one, two, three, four. That's how we get three over four. 
Yep, same way. Other, yep, exactly, Ashley. Same way the other way too. So I can grab this. I can move it out of the way. If I wanted to watch, I can just go ahead and say from here to here. And then here to here. You can do it that way or you can just do it the rise and run first. So the rise first. So doing that. And then from here to there. So the rise would be down one, down two, down three. So negative three for the rise. Let me switch colors to just make it less confusing. I use blue there. So for the run, you got one, two, three, four. Negative, because you're going to the left. And so everybody, a negative divided by a negative, that's going to leave you with a positive. Three over four. And there you go. And there you go. And you're all set. So again, one more time before we continue and do a couple more of these. Are we feeling pretty good about this? Feeling like we can tackle this next one like, yo, man, I don't learn me some math today. Maybe not grammar, but yeah. So there you go. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the next practice. All right, here we go. Three, two, let's hit it. Go, go, go. The correct answer will be A. So this is for those of you guys who are trying to do this with mental math. Again, I'm going to come back and explain this if there's time at the end. But this is what you can do, everybody. Just subtract in the same order. So I can go from this Y to this Y. 8 minus negative, minus negative plus, 8 plus 7, 15. Keep that number up top for yourself in your head. Up top is 15. 3 minus 7, that's 4, but a negative 4 because I'm subtracting too much. So I had that 15 from earlier, negative 4 on bottom, 15 over 4 with a negative, done. Moving on to the next problem, 3, 2, and 1. So if that confused you, don't worry. That was for the the crowd that was already um, really feeling really confident, just helping them feel more confident. Again, if that didn't apply to you, don't worry. I got you. Thanks for going ahead and taking the time to raise your score. Like, I know it's not easy. I know it's tough. I know you got a lot to work through, so I do appreciate you. I'm Coach Anderson, and if you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. That way you can get updated as we continue posting daily so you can continue getting the help and the advice you deserve. So, again, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let's keep rocking the ASVAB. All right, so when we check this out, um, I see a lot of us putting A. I'm, I'm kind of uh, kind of taking the back there that all of us have A there. Okay, let's see. So if we set this up the right way, I'm going to go ahead and just say, hey, uh, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. I'm going to set it up both ways. Don't worry. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just go ahead and do this. And we can have... Over here, negative seven, again, your y2, and then you have your x2, negative seven. You subtract, and then you plug in. Over here, your y1, which is six, and your x1, which is negative three. Okay, the other way would have been this way over here. We would have had, in the other order, six, and then negative three on bottom. We subtract again, because this would be the Y1 and the X1. So again, either way doesn't matter. Either way does not matter at all. So here you have your Y2, and here you have your X2. And so you'll have your negative seven. And here you'll have your negative seven. Now, I mean, it's all good. Y'all all follow the first person to put their answer in. Um, so I'm, I'm just taking it nice and slow to make sure I'm teaching y'all a lesson. It's all good. I'm not laughing on the inside or dying on the inside. It's all good. It's all good. I thought I taught you well, but y'all all fell for the trap. So it's all good. We're going to go ahead and finish this one off here. So it's going to end up being a positive. I hope you can see that now. Because here, if we solve this one on the left side, what we end up having, negative 7 minus 6 is negative 13. Then this becomes negative 7 plus 3, which is negative 4. This becomes a positive 13 over 4 because a positive comes out of a negative being divided by a negative. And then from there, let's go ahead and look over here. Bam, six minus negative seven is six plus seven. So this becomes positive 13. Negative three minus negative seven is negative three plus seven, which is the same thing as seven minus three, which is four. 
Now that's a positive 13 over four. So you get the same answer both ways. And the answer is B. So this is where I go ahead and say, everybody grab your drywall, ball up a fist, go to town. So mistakes happen. It's all good, guys. Mistakes happen. But I'm glad that we could recognize it before I pointed it completely out. So you need to watch out for your negatives, right? you got to watch out for those negatives. At the end of the day, if you have an improper setup, wrong answer, right? Wrong setup always means wrong answer. So please, please, please take a little more time there to really have a proper setup. And if you didn't get the answer yet and you had the right setup, proud of you. Proud of you, proud of you. If you got got with the double negative, we got to go ahead and work on that. We got to work on that for sure. So there it is. Um, let's go ahead. Oh, that was it. That was the last problem. So I will go ahead and explain this one too. And then we'll call it a class. So for this one right here, and as a reminder, for those of you who do want to learn more about my program, just stay till the end. Um, today's going to be a little shorter in terms of um, I'm going to basically go through the whole program and explain how it works. And I'm going to give you a discount code if you want to sign up today. Nice and easy. So with that said, here we go. With this one, you can have two setups. So I can have the X1, Y1. And here we'll have that X2, Y2. And so nice and easy. We'll just go ahead and remember to plug in the right way. Negative seven and seven. Again, we have Y2, X2, minus. And then you have the three and the eight. So the eight is the Y that belongs to the top. The X is the X, or the three is the X1. Just like that. So boom, there you go. And then the other way would have been over here. Slope is always subtraction, by the way, Marquette. You're always subtracting the points. And so here, eight and three, both of these methods will work. Boom. So watch, I'm going to solve both of these at the same time. They're going to be the exact same answer, no matter what. So here you have negative seven minus eight, which is negative 15. Seven minus three is four. So negative 15 over four. There you have it right there. And then over here, what you're going to have is, bam, that's going to be eight plus seven. That's a double negative. So it's positive 15. And then three minus seven is a negative four because, again, the difference between three and seven is four. But you're subtracting the seven, not the three. You're subtracting too much. So it's negative four. So again, that's negative 15 over four. Same answer any way you want to write it.